morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. In today's video, I am going to give you guys five tips on how to clear up your clarion register. Now, the clarion register um, consists of the notes on the clarinet above the break all the way up to high C, and this register often can sound kind of pinched off and maybe really sharp, and so hopefully the tips that I give you today will help you guys clear that up. Before we do that, just a quick reminder. These tips are, are being explained and demonstrated through the Faber Concertino. Now, if you're presently not working on the Concertino and you have no interest in working on the Faber Concertino, don't worry. You can apply these tips to anything that requires a nice, beautiful sounding clarion register. Now the clarion register often can sound kind of pinched off and a little bit close together and one of the, the main reasons for this is that we tend to bite. So the first tip that I, I have for you guys is, well, just a suggestion to not bite so much whenever you're playing it. And I have found that one of the best ways to rid yourself of a habit is to replace it with a new habit, right? So if you depend on biting in order to get your clarion register to come out, or to be in tune, then there's <clears throat> an issue probably in either your embouchure or your air. So that brings me to the first main tip, which is to strengthen your embouchure and to play with a more firm, controlled embouchure, right? So um, just as I've said many times before, we wanna make sure that we allow the reed to vibrate as freely as possible, and we wanna make sure that we don't have any bubbles and air pockets in here and there. And so the steps for a good embouchure, right? Bottom lip over bottom teeth, corners in, top lip down. And the big thing that a lot of folks just don't do or forget to do is to make sure that you create kind of a vacuum seal between your cheeks and your gums and your teeth, right? So yes, flattening out the chin is a big part of having a good embouchure, right? having a flat chin, but that's all part of the whole vacuum seal process, right? Bottom lip over bottom teeth, corners and top lip down, chin flat, right? Vacuum seal, like that. And you you know you got a good vacuum seal, right? When you don't have any air bubbles popping out here and there or up here or down in the corners whenever you play. So that's, that's my first big tip. Make sure you have a nice, great embouchure that's ready to allow your reed to vibrate as freely as possible. Now the second part of this is if you're like, Callie, I've got a really good embouchure but I still feel like I am biting and I really, I need to do this just to get these notes out. Okay, okay, just stop, don't mess up your embouchure or anything. Play with your good embouchure and that vacuum seal but I want you to blow it with more air and, and challenge yourself to always use more air, right? That's gonna give you a bigger, more projected sound. So if you're feeling if you're feeling pretty comfortable in whatever you're doing, then you're probably not doing it right, okay? Um, so you can practice that just by practicing blowing. Pretend you're blowing out a candle, for instance. <sighs> that forward air, you can really feel it, right? If you're imagining blowing out a candle, you can really feel your core being engaged and really just pushing that wind out. So that's the kind of air you want to play with. Now, the third tip is if you're playing with a good embouchure and you're using a lot of air and things are still sounding kind of pinched or maybe a little bit honky or kind of gross, I suggest checking your reeds and make sure your reeds are not too hard or too soft. A reed that's too hard is going to require you to bite no matter what, like because it's just it's just too hard to play, right? And a reed that's too soft, it you may bite, you may pick up some other weird habits of not blowing enough air. And so if you if you choose the right reed, you should be able to put a lot of wind against the reed without the pitch going flat or sharp or all over the place. It should be a very stable pitch, okay? And that's assuming you've got your good embouchure and you're playing without biting and you're using a lot of air. So check your reeds. Old reeds 
can sound pinched. They can, uh, t they'll tend to sound good only at one dynamic, and they may even get a weird honky sort of sound when you blow too much air at it. So if your reeds are old, pitch them. If your reeds are too soft, it'll be very similar. If your reeds aren't broken in yet, don't play on it beyond the point where it gets waterlogged. So you wanna let waterlogged reeds dry out. So if you're trying to break in a whole box all at once, then try to switch out your reeds from, from uh, you know, every few minutes to break in the whole box without playing on a reed that's too waterlogged because that can also affect the kind of air that you play with too. I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot of stuff, but these are things that we have to think about in order to sound good, right? Now the other thing is if you're if you're playing with a lot of air now and you're a good armature and you've got a good read, sometimes we actually will do this weird thing where when we play high we pull our tongue back or we push it down and I'm not really sure why. Perhaps uh, you're letting the mouthpiece push back at you and your, your tongue's going down or something and you're letting your equipment win, right? You got to keep your tongue pointed at the read. You got to keep it close. The air has to be very focused and going directly at the reed. So I, I just imagine like having my home base, like just for the tip of my tongue, if I'm not articulating, home base is like here, right? And so my tongue's pretty high in my mouth. And then when I go to tongue, I just go up like that. And that's about it, right? I'm never, you know, pulling it back. Or if I am, then I know I'm doing something wrong, right? So try that, keep the tongue near the reed, the tip of the tongue close to the reed. Then when you articulate, it's going to be right there and it's going to be really easy and you're not going to have to go really far. And then you'll be able to get really fast, single tonguing articulation, right? But that's a discussion for another time. So for now, just keep your tongue close. Now, the last thing has to do with equipment as well. Um, guys, just take a look at your mouthpiece. Make sure that your mouthpiece is actually in good condition. So um, a lot of times if our mouthpiece is more than two or three years old, um, the, the edges of the rails and the tip can become kind of worn out, a little bit rounded and stuff like that. So if that's you, um, you might want to test out a new mouthpiece or try um, you know, think about getting a new mouthpiece soon because um, any kind of like chip, any sort of wearing out of especially the part that the reed is vibrating against, like right here, the top rail and the sides and stuff like that. If that gets worn or chipped or scratched or anything, then it can really have a great impact on on how you play. And man, I, I just know like when you're, when you're playing on bad equipment, you can pick up bad habits. So check out a new mouthpiece. If, if that's you, check out, try, you know, try out some different mouthpieces and see if that helps. All right, so that's pretty much it, okay? So the five tips here, we've got don't buy it, right? Create a vacuum seal with your embouchure. Keep your tongue close to the reed. Uh, Make sure your reed is balanced to your mouthpiece, not too hard or too soft. And the last, the last tip here is to make sure your mouthpiece is in good condition. All right, so these five tips are not the only tips, right, for making a good sound in the Clarion register. If any of you guys have your own little tips or tricks, any sort of you know, breakthrough that you've had, please leave them in the comments below so we can all learn from each other. I know that a lot of you guys out there are, are working on, on the same things here. And so I'd love to hear what you have to say. Now, if you guys like my channel, please become a patron of my channel for as little as $3 a month. Patrons, you guys are awesome. I love hearing from you on a regular basis. Um, we're going to have a coffee chat today right after this video. Um, for those who are at the coffee level chat level or higher. And in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, a really good rest of your week next week. And I'll see you all in a week for another video in Clarence nuts, cats, and coffee. And as always, happy practicing.